Hi, I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. Diving into electronics for the first time can be daunting. I'm going to show you how to make a basic circuit out of common materials and components to help get you started. Before we make a circuit, let's talk about what a circuit is. A circuit is a closed path through which an electric current can flow. A circuit can be closed or open. If the circuit is closed, all of the components are connected and the electrical current can flow. If the circuit is open, then a connection is broken and the electrical current cannot flow. We use circuits to send energy to turn things on, like the motor in this drill or the bulb in this flashlight. A lot of things we use every day contain circuits and circuit boards. Here's an example of a circuit board. It contains lots of little circuits that each have their own individual function. For example, one circuit might turn on this motor. Another circuit might make this buzzer beep. But not all circuits have to be this complicated. We can make a simple circuit out of just a light bulb, a power source, and some wires. Let's look at the materials we'll need to make this circuit. You'll want some cardboard, some paper clips, some paper fasteners, a battery, some tape, and a light. It would also be useful if you have a pair of needle nose pliers and a utility knife. Circuits typically use wires and circuit traces to send electricity and signals along the circuit. Today, we're gonna to be using the paper clips and the paper fasteners in place of wires. Now, it's important to make sure that these items are metal and don't have any coating. We need them to be conductive so that electricity flows through them wherever they touch. For this project, we'll use a battery as the power source. Batteries have a positive and a negative terminal. Some components only work in one direction, so it's important to note which orientation your battery is being hooked up. This battery supplies 1.5 volts of power. When choosing our light, we want to make sure that we choose one that is rated for low voltage. If the light's rated for two to three volts, it should still work with one battery. Okay, let's make a circuit. First, I'm gonna tape down my battery. Now I'm going to add a paper clip to either side to act as the wires to conduct the electricity, as well as acting as clips to help hold the battery in place. I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to bend it in half, then put it right against the battery and push a fastener right at the other end to help hold it snugly in place. Next, we're gonna add our light. Now, the length of the paper clips is gonna determine where this is gonna go, and if you need to, you can add extra paper clips and fasteners to make sure that it reaches. I'm gonna make a loop of tape to put on the bottom of my light to stick it down to the cardboard. Now, I wanna make sure that the screws of the light are facing out towards my paper clips so that it's easy to reach. My last paper clips, I'm gonna loop around the screws of the light socket and then try to connect the ends over to my other paper clips and then secure them with a fastener. Remember, you wanna make sure that you're using the fasteners to pull the paper clips tight so that you have a nice secure connection. All right, we've made a circuit. If you have everything hooked up correctly, your light should be on. If your light's not on, here's some places you can look for troubleshooting. Check all of your connections. Make sure that metal stays touching metal when not being held. If not, bend it more or try adding some tape. Make sure you're using a fresh battery. My favorite test to see if a battery is good or not is to drop it end first on a hard surface. If the battery bounces, the inside is dry and the battery is probably dead. If it doesn't bounce, it should still have some power. It's not the most accurate method, but it's a quick test you can do that doesn't require a multimeter or a battery tester. If your circuit still doesn't work, take a look at the bulb. Inside the bulb is a filament. If the filament is broken, that turns it into an open circuit because electricity cannot flow across it. Replace the bulb with one where the filament is intact. Lastly, you need to make sure that your light bulb is screwed all the way in. There needs to be a way for electricity to flow into and out of the light bulb. One of those points is the threads on the screw. The other point is the bottom of the light bulb. Both of those points have to be touching the socket for electricity to be able to flow through the light bulb. For this project, I prefer to use incandescent bulbs because they're less sensitive to voltages. If this light bulb is rated for three volts, it will still turn on and glow at a lower voltage and it can handle higher voltages before burning out. If you'd like to use LEDs for this project instead, there are some things you need to know first. LEDs come in different sizes. Here is a three millimeter, a five millimeter, and a 10 millimeter LED. LEDs are more sensitive to voltages than incandescent bulbs. Another difference is that with incandescent bulbs, orientation in the circuit doesn't matter. LED stands for light emitting diode. A diode is an electrical component that only lets electricity flow through it in one direction. 
An LED will not work if it is hooked up backwards. You can identify the negative side of an LED a few different ways. Sometimes the negative side is flat, like on this 5mm LED. Usually, the negative lead is shorter. And lastly, if you look inside the LED, the larger side is the negative side. Let's get back to the circuit. I want to add one more thing, a switch. But the good news is you don't actually have to add anything to the circuit. If there is a break in the circle, the circuit becomes open and the light turns off. When we do this on purpose, we create a switch. In our circuit, you can loosen one of the paper clips so it just touches the top of the fastener. Then it can swivel and easily open and close to become a switch opening and closing the circuit. You might notice on other switches that there's a line on one side and a circle on the other. That represents a closed or open circuit. When the switch is positioned to the O side, that represents an open circuit and it's off. When we position the switch to the line side, that represents a closed circuit and the switch is on. I hope that helps you understand open and closed circuits and how switches work within them. After you've made your own cardboard circuits, tell us about it. Did you have any problems? Did you discover something new? Did you figure out a better way to make them? Post your comments, questions, and stories on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. I'll see you next time.